Welcome to episode N of Physics Girl, where N is an integer. I'm Diana. Look, sometimes I talk about things other than physics, and today is one of those days because I love math, and math is the language of physics. So I want to share with you some of my favorite math tricks. Some are pretty simple but fun, and some are less relevant. Here goes. This is for my American or American curious friends. So I've always calculated tips the same way and it's never failed me until recently. I've always gone with the same method that 20% tip, which is about average for good service, is just $2 on every 10 that you spend. So if you spend $30, that's two, four, $6 tip. $25 is two, four, and an extra dollar because I'm halfway up to the next 10. Easy, but the other day I spent $170 on something and I just froze because my typical method of two, four, six, for every eight, 10 was gonna look ridiculous as I stood there counting on my fingers. So I came up with a different method, which is just moving the decimal place over one and multiplying by two, and you get 34. This is a little bit trickier for fast math, but it's faster than counting by twos. 34. So ignoring the debates on whether tipping is a useful social construct, there is a trick for you. 11's times tables are really easy, until you get past 10, but there's a super simple trick for numbers after that. 43 times 11. Just take the four and the three and separate them, add them, and then put that seven in the middle. And that is the answer. So easy. And you can see why it works from regular long multiplication. This works well if the sum of the digits is less than 10, but it still works if you carry when you add. So 78 times 11, separate the seven and the eight, add seven plus eight equals 15, and then I just make sure I add the one to that seven. Voila. I wish I had known this trick earlier in life. We've all done the trick where multiplying by nines you use your fingers. For example, nine times seven, put your seventh finger down and you get six tens on this side and three ones on this side, 63. It's a really nice trick, but it doesn't explain the coolest part, which is why it works. So if we were multiplying by tens, that'd be easy to see. So four times 10 is four tens fingers or 10, 10, 10, 10. That's 10, 20, 30, 40. If you multiply four times nine, it's almost like four tens, but it's a single one less for each tens finger because nine is one less than 10. So as I count up my tens fingers, 10, 10, 10, 10, I have to keep track of four ones that I take away. We'll keep those four negative ones over here. I'll set aside three of the tens fingers and I'm gonna take the last 10 and bring it over here as 10 ones fingers. Now I take away my four ones from those fingers and I'm left with six. Let's bring this back together with the tens and I've got three tens and six ones, 36. So this works because I'm doing it in base 10 and I have 10 fingers, very convenient. But if I wanted to do my eights times tables, I'd have to use nine fingers and calculate in base nine. For example, eight times five is 44 in base nine, but that's not as useful. Side note, when I was thinking about this problem, I noticed this pattern. Pause the video to check it out if that's your thing, but we're gonna move on. What's the square root of 32? Ah, put down that calculator. You could do it by trial and error, knowing it's gotta be less than six, but more than five, but that's no fun. Let's use geometry. Measure four inches on your pipe cleaner and bend it there to 90 degrees. Bend the pipe cleaner again at four inches and form a right triangle, double checking that the angle is still 90 degrees. Now the length of this third side squared, according to the Pythagorean theorem, it should be a squared plus b squared or 32 because it's the hypotenuse. So the length of this third side should measure the square root of 32. I measure 5.625, which is pretty close to the real answer, which is pretty awesome. So if you want to calculate how close you were without using a calculator, just use the hypotenuse of that triangle to form another right triangle with sides length square root 32. Pythagorean's theorem says that the hypotenuse of that triangle would have to be square root 32 plus 32 or square root 64 or eight. Try that and see how close you get to length eight inches. Using this method, you can construct the square root of any number as long as you have enough pipe cleaner and a long enough ruler. I have Alex from Technicality here helping me with the last trick. You ready for some math magic? I'm excited. I'm excited for my mind to be blown. Okay, without telling me the number, think of a number less than a thousand and write it down. Okay. Now divide the number by 7, 11, and 13, and then give me the remainders for each of those. Okay, I did 7. I got remainder 1. Awesome. My remainder for 11 is 3. The remainder okay. I got for 13 was 5. Awesome. Okay. Now, okay. you gotta give me a second. <clears throat> Alex. Yes. Is this your number? It is indeed! Oh my yes. gosh! <laughs> Can you oh. hold up your number that you originally wrote down? Yes. Right here. Woo! 
Yes! <laughs> Are you blown away? I yeah. How'd you do? Do you have any guesses? I guess it's something to do between the relationships with the remainders in 17, 1, and 13. That's a very good guess because I made you do that. <laughs> I took your remainder numbers and I multiplied them by 715 and then 364 huh. and then 927. 927? Yeah. And then I and then I added those all together and then I subtracted the highest multiple of 1001 that was less than the number that those added up to. Huh. Seems seems pretty random, right? <laughs> Yeah. What did you think? It was really cool. It was really cool. It's a neat little trick that you can play on your friends if, like, you have the time to do it. The math trick Diana just showed me always works if you do the math right. Try it out on your friends. The trick works because of the Chinese remainder theorem. Now, the Chinese remainder theorem isn't just a game. It's actually used in encryption algorithms, and you can see it all throughout history. The rule goes like this. If you know the remainder of your chosen number after dividing it by the three smaller numbers that don't have any common factors other than one, that is, these numbers are co-prime, you can find the chosen number as long as long as it's less than the product of these three smaller numbers. For example, 7 times 11 times 13 is 1001. Once you know those remainders, they only match a single number from 0 to 1001. The remainders are like that number's fingerprint. Pretty cool. Thank you for being a good sport and playing along. Thank you. This video was your idea, so I, of course I'm going to make you do some math. Oh, yes, of course, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alex, for helping out with this last trick, and uh, happy physicsing! <laughs> I'd like to thank Alex, who you just saw from Technicality. He actually came up with the idea for this video and I thought it was really cool, so I wanted to involve him. And he's got his own YouTube channel, which you should check out. It's called Technicality and I'll put a link in the description. We've actually got another video with some fun science on his channel, so I'll link to that as well and you should check it out. Toodles!